When you have people want to take away your right to learn, you must ask yourself, what has happened to those individuals for them to be in the space that they're in? What caused them to feel in the manner which they're feeling? I mean, we got two governors here. You got one who was a teacher before becoming a governor, and you have another one who was a CEO before becoming a governor. And I'm trying to understand what in the world is going on here. But I'm going to touch on both of them, and we're going to get into it right after this. You know it's your favorite coach back at it again. Tip toes down, I'm about to tell you how it all went down. This is Tomorrow Leader Sports Network with your host, Coach Walker. If you're new to the channel, please like, share, subscribe. Hit that notification bell so you can get all the upcoming videos. For all my leaders out there, welcome back. Y'all know the drill. Y'all know the routine. If you haven't done so already, please like, comment, share these videos, and tap in the free to tell them to come on in. It's another positive vibes. We're just having a good time talking about HBCU sports. And don't forget, you can follow us on all social media platforms. The links are listed down below in the description. So without further ado, we're going to go ahead and get on in this thing. But I need y'all to do me one huge favor. Make sure you have the post notification bell turned on to all. Make sure you like this video as well as comment on this video as well because I want to get your thoughts on everything that I'm about to share with you. Because when the news broke that the governor of Virginia, Governor Young, he was looking to remove African-American history from the schools. Now, one would sit here and shake their head like, what in the world? What, what's going on here? I mean, what, what is it about African-American history that has everybody in such a tizzy where they want to have it removed in some way, shape, or fashion? Well, you know, I begin to ask the question, why would someone be so upset with learning about what took place and how things have begun to progress in the manner which they have since those times to now? But then you have to ask yourself another question. Have those things really progressed? Or is it just that the times have changed? Which one is it? He's trying to structure things in the manner which he's trying to because when I sit and I thought, I, I thought about a few things as far as like at what age was I taught about history? And during that time when I was taught history, was I taught history or was I taught his story? Meaning that I was given a story based on what people thought it actually was instead of the general facts of what really took place that led up to this. You get what I'm saying? And in many instances, you're taught those things when you go to college, and a lot of times you're taught even more, especially when you go to HBC, what's going on with these two gentlemen, because what they're trying to do is kind of parallel. It kind of reminds me of the previous president that we had with all of the chaos that he kept going over time, especially when you rile up everybody, you get everybody so riled up as far as what's going on, they tend to come together and they start moving in the manner which you want them to move. And in this instance, there's a lot of people out here that's sick and tired of being played with like that. And they don't quite understand this. And I mean, looking at as far as Governor Yunkin in Virginia, they're saying that this is politically motivated. I mean, you got to understand, Governor Yunkin wants to dictate when the students can learn about lynching. He doesn't want them to learn about that until the sixth grade. And Christopher Columbus was in the slave trade until the 11th grade. You're cool with the students learning that at those periods of time. But you want to remove Martin Luther King any mentions of Martin Luther King you want to remove from K through 5. You don't want any mentions of Juneteenth. And you want to remove content of LGBTQ plus histories, according to 13newsnow.com. Now, I'm trying to understand, like, what have these individuals done to any either one of you guys that have you in such an uproar? But looking at what Governor Youngin is trying to do in Virginia... It don't even compare to what DeSantis is doing over here in Florida. There are some people that have a hard time out here explaining to their young folks, their kids, the things that took place back in the day. You know, we're going to say back in the day. We won't keep it like that because it was back in the day when these things happened. And you're having such a hard time trying to explain to them because now kids are inquisitive, especially when it comes to wanting to ask questions like mommy and daddy. Why did this happen this way? Why were they treated like this? Why did, why did things happen this way? Why are people still treating them like this now? What, I mean, what, what's the difference between them and us? Well, a lot of people have a problem with that. Instead of just saying, hey, you know what? We need to do better as far as with how we treat our fellow man or woman. We need to come together collectively and find a way to um, bridge the gap, so to speak, so that we can continue, so that we can forge forward like we should be. But then you have Governor DeSantis from Florida. Governor DeSantis have 
accomplished a lot. He graduated from Yale with honors, if I'm not mistaken. This young man played baseball as well as was a student athlete. So he was a student. He was a high-ranking student in the classroom as well as he did his thing out there on the baseball diamond as well. Did you know that your governor used to be a teacher at Darlington High School? It was a private school where he was a um, he was he was teaching at in Georgia. Now, I'm trying to understand why. What what exactly are you looking to accomplish with rejecting the African American studies classes and wanting to remove programs that deal with diversity, equity, and inclusion? What 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 is it about all of that that has you in such an uproar? You know, in a, I'm not gonna say in a rage, but in an uproar that. These things need to be removed. These things need to be changed. These things don't need to be taught at all. And the funny thing is that you're requesting all of the institutions, K through 12, as well as the colleges and universities within the state of Florida, they need to provide you what they're spending on these different uh, programs. So what that leads me to believe is if they're sitting there putting numbers as far as these different programs that they're doing that you're totally against, you're going to take the money from them. You're going to defund them. So... I know many of you may or may not know, like I stated before, you may not know that your pre your governor was a previous teacher. And I'm glad to see that all of you that were out there marching along with the uh, social right dignitaries and things of that nature was out there letting your voices be heard. Start trying to box folks in and tell them what they can and can't do. But you, you yourself, you can do all of the things that you want to do without there being any consequences, or any questions as far as how you move and go about your day and things that you want to talk about in that nature. But what we fail to understand is as we go along through life, we create our own history. And sometimes our own history may come back and bite us in the behind if we're not careful as far as how we do things out here in these streets. Because people have a tendency of remembering what you did to them, what you said to them, and how you treated them. And when they're asked questions about you, guess what? Those que those answers are going to come back in a manner which you're not going to like them. And you wanna go, you're going you're gonna to want to debunk what's being said because you're going to be like, no, that's not me. That's not the person that I am. But it kind of goes like I tell the athletes when they're looking to get recruited to go to continue their collegiate careers. When you got, you're in high school and you got these coaches wanting to come in there and recruit your tail, guess what? You never know who they're going to go talk to. They can go talk to the janitor. They can go talk to somebody in the lunchroom. They can go daggone talk to the bus lady. You don't know who they're going to ask questions to about you. And when those answers come back about you, you're sitting there looking like, whoa, is that, that ain't me. But then again, you might not give a daggone. You're just like, hey, I don't care. This is who I am. And looking at some of the things that was asked from some of the folks that you taught while at that high school leads me to believe this is who you are. Governor DeSantis, as far as the six areas of criteria that you feel so strongly about and you're against, you know, they're against your core values. The six areas of criteria that's in the AP um, African American Studies course uh, outline, those things, against, they, those things are against your core values. Now, according to Matthew Arn, who stated, you taught him at Darlington, you had expressed strong feelings against abortions. You even told his, girl, you even told his girlfriend at the time that it was morally wrong. Other former student felt that you treated her badly because of her race. And the, mar the, remarks, that, the remarks that you made towards her, the economic efficacy of slavery that you felt you were trying, you know, you were trying to justify slavery. That's that's cold, brother. That, that that's cold. You try you trying to justify slavery? Man, come on. When it was stated that in the same article that you had a key figure in passing LBGTQ plus healthcare and education laws in the don't say gay law, which strips the license of any teacher that discusses sexuality or gender. In the classroom. Now we can't forget about the Stop Woke Act, which limits race-based discussions in at schools. Now, according to now, I'm go back to that article previously where they talked about you were at a lot of the parties that was going on with the seniors at the high school that you taught at. Matter of fact, when you left, 
There was a letter that went out that stated that there is no fraternizing with the students. A lot of the students didn't quite understand why you were at those parties because, at the, you know, they, they were doing things that they didn't have no business doing. And you should have been there correcting that, saying, hey, listen, guys, you shouldn't be out here drinking. They're not 21. So I'm trying to understand why. Why was that not emphasized to uh, um, the students at that time? Pushing your views at them in a manner which how you feel. Back then, you still feel the same way now. This explains the six concerns found within the 79-page document of the AP African American Studies course that was a major concern to you. Six areas of concern for this course also deals with the uh, readings from some of, some of these authors that you are not going to allow them to use as well. Now, topic 4.15, intersectionality and activism which includes readings by Kimberly Crenshaw, known for founder of Intersexuality, co-editor of Critical Race Theory, the key writings that for the key writers that formed the movement, Angela Davis, self-avowed communist and Marxist. Now, topic 4.19, black queer black queer studies. Now, the readings include Roger Ferguson, who explains who explains we have to encourage and develop practices whereby queerness isn't a surrender to the status quo of race, class, gender, and sexuality. It means building forms of queerness that reject the given realities of the government and the market. Topic 4.29, Movement for Black Lives. Movement for Black Lives is an organization with stated objectives that include eliminating prisons and jails, ending pretrial detentions, and concluding the war on black, trans, queer, gender, nonconforming, and intersex people, including reading Leslie Key Jones, who wrote Everyday Black People Produce, an unquantifiable amount of content for the same social media corporations that reproduce the white supremacist superstructures that oppress us. It goes further. Topic 4.16, Black Feminist Literary Thought, including readings from Bell Hooks, author of many intersectionality texts, and in the recommended reading states, I begin to use the phrase in my work, white supremacist, capitalist, patriarchy, because I wanted to have some language that would actually remind us continually of the interblocking systems of domination that define our reality. Topic 4.30, the reparations movement. All points that all points and resources in this study advocate for reparations. There is no critical perspective or balancing opinion in this lesson. Topic 4.31, black study and black struggle in the 21st century. Included reading, Robin D.G. Kelly argues that activism rather than the university system is the catalyst for social transformation. Kelly's first book was a study of black communists in Alabama. Kelly warns that simply establishing safe spaces and renaming campus buildings does nothing to overflow capitalism. Everything that I just stated to you, I got this from NBC News where they got it. Um, they showed the AP African American Studies course framework and exam overview, February 2022 preview. Now, all, like I said, 79 pages has all of this stuff in there for you to sit down and get a, a clear understanding of what this course entailed as far as what they were going to be teaching that Governor DeSantis is so vehemently against. Now, again, I say this. I'm glad to see so many of the Florida colleges, universities, and the schools, as well as the students, the teachers, and the uh, civil rights movement dignitaries are there to stand up for the rights of the people. Because again, how in the world are we? How in the world are we sitting here in this day and age, still trying to dictate what people can and cannot learn? How do people take a stand and understand that this can't continue to keep happening? No matter which is going on. Seeing it in print that Governor Sanders wants to limit race discussions. How does this affect predominantly white institutions within the state of Florida? Matter of fact, I'm trying to understand how in the world does this affect HBCUs in Florida? Because African-American studies is being taught in those institutions. So what's going to happen now? You're going to tell us that those things can no longer be taught to the students? 
I, I'm trying, I'm really trying to understand this because this is so, this is something that I've never in a million years would have thought could happen. And here we are standing right before it, trying to figure it I out. understand everyone is trying to put their best foot forward for when they want to run for office. I understand that. But it leads me back to the HBCUs as well as the predominantly uh, white institutions there in the state of Florida. I saw that the privately held HBCUs in the state of Florida had gotten the financial uh, financial windfall that they gotten for their institution. What blowback are they going to get if they, if by chance, they don't follow along with what's being required of them? What exactly is going to happen to those institutions if they do not conform? And they're going to be in a world of hurt because now it's like they're depending on those finances to make sure that they're able to continue to keep moving forward. See, I stated before in the Bethune-Cookman video when I talked about everything that was going on with Ed Reed, how when you were given the finances that you were given, there's going to be a requirement on back payment. Remember, there's always an ROI when somebody invests in you. If you don't have sweat equity in the game to get yourself moving forward in a matter of what you're looking to do, and somebody else comes in and they're doing something that's out of sorts, that you haven't seen done before, you got to ask them questions, man, like what's going on. I'm not saying that any of the HBCUs in Florida has given up anything, not yet. But if this is pushed through, I want to see what type of blowback is going to happen on all of those schools here, but more so those HBCUs, because I'm under, I understand how, how much they need the financial stability to continue to keep moving forward with making sure they keep their doors open for the institution as well as those students coming in there to get educated. Now, I'm going to say this, and I know many of you are going to be like, Coach, you tripping on this one. But I'm going to be honest with you. It seems that Jim Crow has left the books and made his way to the Internet. And why I say that is because the information is right here at our fingertips. But we just don't have time to sit down or we don't take the time to sit down and find out exactly what's going on. I know the words that everything that I profess to you as far as what, you know, what I've read and, and the findings of all of these things. I know you're sitting there scratching your head like, wait a minute, where in the heck did you get all some of this stuff from? I had to sit down and really dig in on this because I actually had to go back and revisit this several times because this was a lot of the things that I talked about previously when it came to Bethune Cookman. It wasn't trying to be mean, malicious, or nasty, anything like that towards anyone down there Bethune. It, it, it was none of that. It was the fact that we're sitting here playing games and not paying attention to what's going on. You have an individual that wants to look down on the masses as if he's the shepherd and y'all are the sheep and y'all going to move the way he wants y'all to move because guess what? He's investing in you guys based on the money catered for the state itself to continue to keep moving in the manner in which it moves. Everybody, it's time to pay attention on what's going on. It's time to get an understanding of what's happening. It ain't just you got your phone in your face and you want to go to TikTok. Oh, by the way, he blocked TikTok as well uh, on government uh, equipment as far as, you know, you guys get no TikTok. So y'all ain't going to be able to get on TikTok neither if you're using a government issue anything. So I'm just saying to you, come on, get it together, guys. Get, get it together. But, hey, I'm glad everybody is standing up and fighting for what they feel is right. Continue to keep forging forward. And remember, guys, until next time, be the one and lead.